Welcome to another edition of Homegrown Health. I'm your host, Joni Abbott. You're listening to naturalnewsradio.com. The best in health talk radio lives right here. I had so much fun, so much fun hosting the Robert Scott Bell Show yesterday on GCN Live and here at Natural News. It was Robert's third anniversary for being here on Natural News Radio, and I was just I'm so thrilled to be a part of his team and uh, be able to help him out. Now, Robert's show airs right before on on Natural News Radio, so you can listen to him 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern. And then stay tuned one more hour, would you? Just one more little wee hour to be with me right here at Homegrown Health. As you know, I've been bringing you all kinds of motivational and inspiring stories about fresh superstars. What is a fresh superstar? Well, first, got to know what fresh greens are and fresh products. You can go to freshproducts.com. Fresh Greens is something I was introduced to, uh, owned by Howie Hoffman. He is such a dynamic company owner. He really, he knows his stuff when it concerns pH and how greens help to keep your pH in that right range where sickness cannot thrive and keeping your body the right balance of both acidic and alkaline. Because if you get to be one or the other, if the pendulum swings in either direction too far, then sickness and disease can ensue. Howie just uh, has just been fantastic in not only allowing me to you know, try out the greens and understand how it works, but they just make me feel great. And he chose me, along with many others, to be a fresh superstar for how we motivate others and the education and information that we bring. And I just decided I was going to team up with all these other fresh superstars and bring them to you this month uh, and all last month right here on Homegrown Health. And I have another one with me. He is not new to this program, though. He is actually just one of my favorite friends. It's Ian Jacklin from iCareCancer.com. Ian was a world kickboxing champion, and he has had quite the journey in his life. Ian, welcome back to Homegrown Health. Oh, thank you, Joni. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to be here. I love this show. Yeah, I know. Fresh superstar. (laughs) (laughs) And I have to, just because I'm Canadian, but I was not the world champion. I was the Canadian champion. North America, North American champion. And North number two, I was number two, I was number two in the world. I, I retired before I could take the world championship. But thank well, you. you are the world <laughs> champion to me, Ian Jacqueline. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> did I smooth it over? Okay. Did I did I cover my tracks well enough there? Yes, and that's okay. Everybody says that all the time, and it's just I I mean if I, I got honor and respect, and I honor and respect true world champions. And although I fought world champions and I beat world champions, just not on the night that it counted. Um, it's all right, you know. Well, I well I so. watched that documentary that was put out, Jackal, right? That was oh, yeah. put out with you, and that's how I learned of your journey as, uh, you know, uh, how you got into kickboxing. You were what, sixteen years old, and you, they, you were doing kickboxing before there before kickboxing was actually called kickboxing. Well, before. It was called MMA yeah, before the UFC came along, before the martial arts became big, uh, bigger than boxing now. You mm-hmm. know, um, I was in the kickboxing. Yeah, we were. I'm called a pioneer of the UFC's ultimate fighting sport because we, it went from standard boxing to us crazy guys that came out and wanted to kick too, like the Bruce Lee, you know, movies. We saw that and we wanted to do kickboxing. And then from there, they just you know, in true evolutionary form, took the next step, and that was adding the ground game. You know, and thank God the Gracies uh, over in Brazil, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu had evolved that technique like no other. So you you combine the ground game with the, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with some of the amazing uh, martial arts from, from all the different martial arts there is, and, and you got the greatest sport in the world. That's my favorite sport today. I may do that, too. After I'm done helping people learn how to cure cancer, I may take on a young guy and take him to the championship. <laughs> oh, you'd be like Rocky Balboa coming back and fighting Tommy Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I was watching Rocky last night. This just oh, reminds right. me of you. I loved kickboxing when I was doing it. Uh, I just did it for fun and for cardio, but there, there is something about having the spirit of a fighter, and I have fought... My whole life, from the time I was born premature, I I just always, you know, had to fight for the things that I wanted. And uh, I I know that for many fighters out there, it's kind of the same way. So I enjoy the sport myself just from a, I don't know, like, go get it kind of mentality. You know, I just kind of get in there. And you're not just Irish, too. You're black Irish, right? You're you're like (laughs) 
forget about it. I'm the double Donnelly. trouble. You're the Donnellys over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm double trouble when it comes to, to that, I guess. The Spanish fire and the Irish fight. Tell me about your childhood a little bit. What what brought you into becoming a kickboxing champion? How did you get started? How did you know that that was a, a passion in your life that you wanted to pursue? It's I, it's interesting because it really relates to what I do today, too. I don't like seeing other people get hurt and bullied. I hate bullies. I just can't. I don't like it when people hurt other people. I think the only reason you should be on this earth is to help other people. And if you're not here to do that, then get off. Right. And I, I saw my best friend get beat up in front of me by a couple of guys while I got held down. And I was kind of melodramatic. And I went to the desk in my grade nine class or whatever it was. And I inscribed it never again. And I went home and made my mom take me to karate and let me join up and you know two years later I had my first pro fight and I think two years after that I was a champion you wow know? <laughs> it happened very quickly for you you must have just really picked up on the thing that was meant to be your thing yes I was blessed with some pretty amazing genetics I was adopted so I was raised by my adopted parents in Canada uh, and my adopted my my biological parents who I just met like maybe eight years ago wow. just my mother i only met her and but she told me all about apparently my father could have been a professional athlete and whatever he wanted i haven't met him yet but um so and that's kind of what i was i was just a naturally gifted athlete and then when i found when i put passion behind because i was great at football basketball hockey whatever you want you know but i had passion for the fighting because there was a reason for it and that's to stop all the people from hurting people <laughs> it's just this weird thing i got in me you know no no it's all heart that's a, it's like you're that's why you're like you remind me of rocky it's all heart <laughs> yeah and if you're going to be that guy you got to be good <laughs> right right if you're going to be the guy fighting everybody else's battles right you're going to have to have some backup I used to drive cab in South Central, and the, you know the the brothers and sisters would be like, "Wow, even the black people don't drive cab down here. Are you crazy? <laughs> like you're complaining? They're like, no, no. <laughs> like, let's go. Where you want to go? I loved it down. There. I could make all my money because nobody really would go down there. But I'm not really afraid of anything. Plus, I always know I got God on my side. You know. Yeah. So. I've been. I've led a fortunate life. You're, I like your confidence. I really like the the fact that you're so sure of yourself in the right ways. Right? It's not like you're an expert in everything, but in the where it matters, where you're where you have your expertise, you are you are confident, and that is, I I admire that. Oh, thank you. Well, that's the key. And you uh, you look at any, you can always tell a thug in in the UFC or a real guy that came from the martial arts because he'll have honor, respect, and realize there's a lot more to to the game, to life, than just being a tough guy. And once you've mastered fighting and you get really good at it, you don't have to prove it. You don't have to be the tough guy and beat anybody up and stuff like that. And it's funny. And I, I never really had the issue anyway. I just wanted to be better. If you're going to be a protector, you have to. You might as well be the best you can be. And, and I was also really good at it too. So Right, right. <laughs> so 16 years old, I think that brings us right to about 16, 17, you know, maybe 18. That's when you started to fight professionally. Yeah, and I won the Canadian Championship, and then I got invited to London, England, because I was also a good boxer. And Lennox Lewis, who just won the gold medal in the Olympics, the 88 Olympics, his trainers, like, he had his first pro fight in my hometown, because that's where he was from, too. He's from the, the Canadian area, Kitchener and Toronto. And I'm from London. So they so they basically took me back to England with them, because they said, oh, there's a white boy that could fight, you know? <laughs> even, though, even though I was a kickboxer, they, I was good enough. So I went back and... Spent, spent about half a year there doing some boxing and it wasn't really my thing. I didn't go some personal issues with the, one of the trainers, so I just moved on and went back. I went to California, and that's how I continued the fighting the kickboxing career, won the North American Championship, uh, fought for the world title, lost a close decision to Javier Mendez, who incidentally is the trainer of the heavyweight champ, the Velasquez, uh, King oh, Velasquez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. The guy that I fought for the world championship and had beat in a previous fight a few years previous. So we're basically one and one. Uh, I, I was watching the UFC recently, and I'm like, hey, there's Javier Mendez, man. That's the guy I, we battled twice. Let's, like, I'm like, too bad he's out of shape now because we could do it again. You know, <laughs> let's let's have that uh, that third tiebreaker fight. Come out of retirement, both of you, right? Yeah, and hopefully you make think, it 12 I rounds. He'd make, I don't think he'd make weight like I would. Yeah, not <laughs> now. Right. No kidding. I think he needs to look at my blending video on YouTube. <laughs> Maybe you should send it to him. Be like, dude, come on. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes, your blending video. We will definitely get to that here in the journey. Uh, but you, your career ended up taking a completely different turn. And this is what I think is interesting with the fighting and, and the championships. Then you got into acting. And that was when a lot of the martial arts or mixed martial art movies were coming out in the late 80s and early 90s, right? Mid 90s? Yes, but again, it wasn't even called mixed martial art. They didn't even know what that was. The first UFC hadn't even happened yet. Right. Well, I was doing movies like Kickboxer 3 and Ring of Fire 2 and Expert Weapon and Deathmatch. They're, they're all basically 90s, early 90s, low budget, low rent karate flicks, which, you know, are now kind of infamous. I'm actually kind of famous in, in a certain niche of the world, the martial art world, because of these, these movies that nobody even knew about. And I've forgotten. I've done. You know, now I've got fans on Facebook for stuff that I, you know, forgot I even did, you know. <laughs> now I'm helping people cure themselves of cancer, you know. I forgot I used to be the kickboxing guy, you know. Right, right. And so you you just, uh, in that journey of, of being this hot kickboxer guy, because I'm just going to put it out there, ladies, if you haven't gone to his Facebook page and looked at his <laughs> his pictures, you're going to be like, I mean, my, my daughters even swoon over your kickboxing pictures from 20 really? years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, my daughter's like, Mom, he is so cute. Oh, he is so hot. Look at that picture right there. Oh, do you see his abs? Oh, my gosh. He's, it's so crazy, right? So it's so oh. fun. It's so fun to, um, you know, because you're because the 90s, they weren't even thought of. Like, I was still a kid, you know? <laughs> so oh, I know. It was hysterical. I was hanging out with some friends last night, and my one friend's sister is 21, and I said, what year were you born in? Because I'm 60s, right? 68. So I'm just not used to hearing anything. Like, I think she said, well, whatever 21 is, you know, she said 90s, and I'm like, 90s? No, you can't, you can't be 21 and be born in the 90s. 90s was yesterday. That's I was right. just, I was, I was working at the Roxbury yesterday in the 90s, you know. Right. Oh, I know. And now, now 21 year old kids are walking around and they weren't even born till the 90s. It's just like, oh, how old I, how old I am. And but I don't feel it, you know. You I don't. don't feel it. You don't, and you don't look it. You've aged really well. <laughs> you, you just, you look probably. 10, 15 years younger than what you are. That's what I'm told. I'm still told I can, I'm pulling off 30, even though I'm 45. So that's good. And that's great for the movies, too, because that's all. I don't care what age I am or what I look like in real life, you know, because it's all about the love and the heart and that. But for an acting career, which I'm hoping to reestablish, it's good that I can still play the, the leading man at, at 45, you know. Right. I can still play the, probably the 30-year-old in the movie. Oh, let me tell you, Richard Gere, look at him. He was older and he was a leading man and he was way older than 45, I think. Well, that's not looking near as good. good. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the bonus of being a man in Hollywood. I, <laughs> sorry, sorry, ladies. I mean, the, the, the leading lady thing, you're pretty much, you don't have as many years as some of us guys do. It's, right. It's, well, tra it's tragic, and I'm sorry. but <laughs> <laughs> The unveiling of the, the six-pack again probably helps a whole lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. That came that, back for you quite easily after 10, you know, years of fighting. Well, we'll I have to get to that because we're still, I'm still in your 20s here. So mm -hmm. we'll go back to your 20s and we'll tell everyone how Ian got his six-pack back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like how Stella got her groove back, Ian got his six-pack back. That's uh, exactly what I was thinking when you said that. Right? I know, we had the ESP thing going on. Yeah, yeah. It's happening, I'm telling you. <laughs> Dion Warwick, your psychic friend. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, going back to your 20s, you ended up in these films, and then you got this hottie, beautiful, blonde girlfriend, J. Cynthia Brooks, yes. and you guys were in a Bonnie and Clyde movie together, maybe some other ones, and she's an actress that was on Days of Our Lives. She was in some other films, maybe some other commercials, and uh, you met her, and what happened? What did she tell you? Um, we were doing a play together in Los Angeles and called Spoiled Women, incidentally, and she really was spoiled because she cured herself of cancer because most women 17 years ago didn't do that, especially on their own when they were told they had a year to live Absolutely. And, and, and did no chemo radiation or surgery. And back then, if you heard you didn't do chemo radiation or surgery, they wouldn't understand it. Now they do because of pioneers like herself and and me and you and, and all our friends at Natural News getting out there and screaming from the top of our lungs for the last 20 years now that cancer is curable if you stay away from your oncologist. Right. And that's I learned it through her. She was the, um, you know, the catalyst. That, and as soon as I heard 
that she cured herself of cancer. Of course, I had to double check it and and then go to the internet and find other people that did it as well. So she wasn't just a fluke. And then once I saw in my own head that cancer was curable if you stayed away from your oncologist, I snapped. I thought, wait a minute, you're hurting good people. You're hurting my mother, my father, my everybody I know and everybody's brother and sister too and they're you know probably their cats as it turns out they're hurting our animals too the right. vets are just as screwed as the MDs out there folks with their damn medicines we have to get back to the naturopathic way of life it's the only way we're going to survive especially what's going on in this world today with the whole radiation filth and misery going on I know from Fukushima and all the other you know toxins that we run into poisons in our food and in our water I mean we just are getting you know, hit at every level with the, the most basic needs, air, food, and water. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just decided to take on this role of starting to be that voice that cancer can be cured, and you started iCureCancer.com. Yes, yeah, and that would have been in 90... I want to... Oh, no. Oh, my God. That was until 2003, I think, is when I met Dr. Bernardo at the Cancer Control Society. Um and I just, yeah, I started, sh I just took a camera and put it in front of people that had cured themselves of cancer and the ones that helped them, like the doctors. Mm -hmm. And I just would go to the cancer control seminar every year for the next few years. You know, I didn't ever, nobody invested. I could never get anybody to invest in this. I had to do it myself, boring a friend's, you know, standard definition camera back then. I shot SD and, and edited on Final Cut Pro, but finally it came out in 2006, and I would play it every week at the theater, at the local small theater in, in Elmira, New York. The Heights Theater, I think it was. Heights Theater, that's right. The guy Craig that owned the place, a small town, would let me play my movie there every Sunday, even though it was only the first cut done. And he would split the ticket sales with me. Sometimes we'd have 10 people, sometimes 40, but I figured even though it was a rough cut and then no, no filmmaker would any, any ever let their work be seen ahead of time, right? But I don't care. This is about information, saving people's lives. And I thought, I should have this playing now, even though it's not pretty yet. Because even the camera fell over in one shot, I think, in the first screen. <laughs> I hadn't got to that cut yet. But it didn't matter because the story was there as far as front to back. And, and it was a good thing I did that because a few years later I got a thank you. And I still get a thank you honey jar every, every year or so from this couple that uh, saw the film out there in the, the upstate New York area and it helped them with their decisions and they cured the, her cancer, her breast cancer. Oh, wow. This yeah. is, that is so gratifying, isn't it? It's so rewarding when people put the information to good use and then they go ahead and they use it as a starting point. They wake themselves up. It, they empower themselves. They take charge of their health and healing and then they start making educated decisions along with the help of natural doctors and people who have done this. And next thing you know, they're like, wow, I can do this too. Yeah, and it's really nice when they remember to thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and they don't always, you know, and that's fine because they're just so happy that they they're they're living and usually like a year or two down the line i might get you know but thank you <laughs> but it, it was cool it was very nice and they have the best honey in the world i mean <laughs> it, it was worth her getting cancer just so i could get this honey for the rest right. of my life <laughs> <laughs> thank you for curing your cancer i get the best honey ever yeah i mean i'm telling they got to go into business i don't know what kind of bees they got floating around there in upstate new york but boy that honey's good oh that's awesome i i love i love the little things and so those little things they keep you going so now you you just have just completely consumed yourself 100 percent in that you're no longer fighting you've retired and you have been on your own health journey with learning how to keep your ph in check and that's kind of where fresh greens come in because we met last year and we both had just learned about fresh greens we met at the Long Beach Health Freedom Expo. If you go to Facebook.com slash Homegrown Health, the Homegrown Health Facebook page, and you look at our old pictures, Ian and I, uh, I was standing there with him, and I made the uh, fist face. And we were both, well, I was m more overweight than what you were, but you were about 30 pounds overweight in that picture, and I had uh. just lost over 40 pounds. I think I'd lost 47 pounds in that picture, and now I've lost almost 80. Total, and right? You've yeah. lost all of yours. 
Yeah, and I've I've probably lost a total of forty. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, we we got our fatty pictures. Next time we see each other, we'll do, do our ripped pictures. <laughs> now we're going to be together in Branson, Missouri, April third through the fifth at right. Organic Guru Lynette Pate, another fresh superstar at her Organic Gala event. You can go to livehappybepure dot com to get your tickets. And Ian and I are going to do our follow up sexy pictures. That's right. <laughs> we'll have that's those right. on. We'll have our unfatty pictures. But see, I still have more to lose. You didn't have that much. I'm still tightening up and firming up, and I'm, you know, I'm hoping to really, by the time it's all said and done, and being at my best weight, probably having lost a hundred pounds total. That's my goal, if yeah. my body will let me do it. No, and I think you will, and it's. I really take my hat off to you for that. Cause that's that's some serious work. I mean, for, for me, I was able to get rid of about thirty pounds, I'd say, in a couple of months. Over, it wasn't long, and it was just kind of gone. And now I'm sort of used to it. So, but for you to make that's a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. And I was lucky because I have all this muscle underneath my fat from the years of biting, you know. So. Yeah, years of birth, years of birthing and stretching, and <laughs> and I have like the separated abdominal muscles, and I'm trying to heal those without surgery. And I got some of that stretch skin and stretch work. So I've got all the, I've got a lot of mess to work through. <laughs> Thank God for your six pack. I'm like, yeah. Nice genetics, yeah. buddy. I know it's you women. You got it. We we know you got it a lot harder than us. Ah, uh, yeah, and yeah, we do. <laughs> I won't lie. I was gonna no. say, ah, eh, no, maybe it's equally hard. No, I'll just, I'll say it. No. We, yeah, we especially birth with this childbirth thing, you've been kind of, Joni's been teaching me about childbirth a bit because she knows someday I want to get married and have kids, even though I'm like 100 years old already. Oh, stop. Uh, she's been teaching me about the birth, home births, and all that stuff. And it's, I got nothing but respect for you girls. Oh, good, good. <laughs> well, See, that's how you find ladies, Ian. You just have to be like, hey, baby, I'm going to totally respect your body and the fact that you can bring life into this world through your body. And it, then you just melt them. Then you're all yeah. set. Well, good then. Good. Good. They'll be flocking your way soon. Let me know if you need any help, like baseball bat, like keeping them off. Of <laughs> We're gonna be at that thing, and I'm just gonna be like, "Hey, hold on, hold on. We're gonna try to have one more conversation and interview here. Then you can have him, piranhas." <laughs> 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 well, at that Health Freedom Expo in L.A. Um, or Long Beach, we, uh, you were working on your second eye care cancer dot com yeah. for two and let's talk a little bit about that i found out that cancer was curable as i was mentioning mm -hmm. by making i cure cancer part one uh and i had hoped to prove my, myself wrong or to prove the movie wrong to prove i wanted to prove western medicine to be right and alternative medicine to be quackery because that's what my leaders were telling me that's what that's why the system was in place the way it was, is because it worked. And these guys are quacks that say anything but. So I had to prove that. And I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I proved the opposite. I proved that Western medicine's quackery. Western medicine was built by, by the, uh, um, you know, the Rockefeller and the Carnegies. They owned the pharmaceutical companies, so they bought out the medical schools, which, boom, there goes our, our system. Now it's all about drugs and nothing that was natural and was working. Almost all, so much cannabis was used way back in the day before they, the prohibition came because cannabis heals so many different things. Right. But when they, when they went drugs, that was it. And our health has been screwed ever since, but thank God we're ending the prohibition. Uh, we are lightning as a, as a human race, I believe. We're in the age of Aquarius and I'm just, I'm so happy You're gonna to see You're going to make me start singing some 70s songs or 60s yeah. songs that I. Well, <laughs> I mean, we would make the, the flower children proud because we're still fighting a good fight and it's actually coming around people know what an alkaline diet is now people know that the first almost everybody before nobody came to me i would basically have to hunt people down and beg them to listen to me now they come to me all the time and they're and i go do you know what alkaline diet is and they're like Psh. You know? Yeah, yeah. Of course we do. Are you kidding me? You know how long I've been yeah, fighting for that? You know? <laughs> Come on. You know, give me something tough. <laughs> <laughs> so it's awesome to have seen the evolution, and there's just no denying it. And that was the greatest thing in, for me, because let me tell you how scary it is. I'm sure Mike Adams, and I'm sure you, and, and Robert Scott Bell, anybody that's been in this kind of limelight spouting off the way we did and have done since we first learned the truth. I don't know about you guys, but when I first learned the truth, still years into it, I still was waiting to be proven wrong or to somehow, you know, because it's just not, it doesn't make sense to me that I, me, Ian Jacqueline, just a guy that barely got through high school could figure this out. But guys with PhDs and, and, and MDs and tons of letters behind their name can't 
figure it out. You know, even though it's right there in their face, it's like uh, chemotherapy. They know don't kill cancer stem cells. Yet they give you can uh, chemotherapy for cancer, and that's what kills you is cancer stem cells. You know, yeah. it's just I and that's something. Tell that anybody else cancer and cancer, and you got an oncologist harping at you. Tell them that. Ask them. Say, hey, does chemotherapy kill cancer stem cells? No. Then why am I taking it? Does radiation kill cancer stem cells? No, and it makes them stronger. What? <laughs> so well, the, the, and the, just knowing from the the treatments people have received, you know, the the data and the studies that come out, they only study five years out because after the five years after chemo and radiation, a lot of times they don't have a longer term study on the life expectancy and quality of life of these people because residual cancers and other in other places caused by the radiation and the chemotherapy. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Why would we take a procedure that's going to not only kill our immune system and take the one God-given system that we were given to fight and ward off disease and help protect us and keep us healthy, why would we take that away from our bodies in order to put more poison into it? And I know what somebody's thinking right now. Yeah, but um, my aunt got chemo and she's okay yeah that's awesome um there's a three percent chance that the chemo fixed her if it was a tumor type cancer there's i i've heard high up into the 50s chance of placebo effect curing her cancer it's at least you know 17 percent. or if you do nothing i think you have a 17 percent chance of curing cancer if you do chemotherapy you only have a three percent chance mm. you know yeah, yeah. I and every person is different. A lot of times, cancer is treated with a one size fits all approach, and each person's individual needs, the the things nutritionally that they might be deficient on or deficient in, is going to be completely different. So you cannot approach cancer like it like put a one just blanket over it blanket treatments over it and say okay the same thing for everybody across the board because that's not how it works. Right, exactly. Welcome back to Homegrown Health. I'm your host, Joni Abbott, on naturalnewsradio.com. Thanks so much for joining us today. Fresh superstar, Ian Jacqueline. He's just an amazing, amazing guy. He's part of iCareCancer.com. You can find him on Facebook. You can go to iCareCancer.com, the website. And he is a documentary filmmaker, actor, director, kickboxing champion. This man kind of does it all. Ian, thanks for joining us again. And welcome back to Homegrown Health, this segment. Oh, you're welcome. And, and what an honor. And I should say this. I can't believe I've never said this. I've been on this Natural News Network so many times for the last, I don't know, at least 10 years or however long Mike's been around, I've been, everything he posts, I post, repost. Him and um, uh, Dr. Mercola. That's like my job, even though I've never been hired. <laughs> Every night before I go to bed, I almost always repost something from him and Dr. Mercola. So right. that's my, I, that's that's my, because I worship your guys, um, naturalnews.com. So that's my con we, contribution. I'm always trying to push it, you know, the good yes. news out there. Yes. Well, it's just, you know, it's content unlike anywhere else you can find on the internet. I, I love Mike's approach. I love the levels of research and the depths of research that he goes to. So, you know, I'm just as awestruck <laughs> with natural news as you are, and I'm here. I know. Isn't it crazy that we're actually a part of that family? It it's is. like, oh, my God, how did that happen? No, I you think know? it happens because we, we have studied so much, and we have a lot to share, and we have a lot to say, and we are just, I think the more voices that we have out there, the many voices that we can have, it will reverberate and ring to the right ears of the people who need to hear it. That's what I believe you, anyway. Yeah, well, you can tell we're just the angriest because they can't shut us up and we got to find a way to talk <laughs> somehow, you know. I don't even know, <laughs> but I'm also passionate because, because when you empower yourself with knowledge and at least consider that the status quo may not be for you, if you're in that realm, then I think you might act. And sometimes it's like planting little seeds, right? We just plant these little seeds of truth and whatever ground, it's such a biblical reference, but whatever ground you're, that it will, that it falls upon, uh, the ground that is the ripest or, or ready to receive it, it will start to take root and plant and sprout. So yeah. my part, I always look at it like whether I'm watering or I'm planting or I'm sowing, my part in all of this is to just 
be be the voice that I'm supposed to be, give the information that I've been hired to give and go with it. And whoever listens, whatever my job is in that person's life, that'll be the role that I, I guess I have to play in that season or portion of their life. And it might not be until years and years later. I mean, this has happened to you. Like you said, how many year, times have you said something to somebody who was just so outraged by what you had to say because it was like nails on a chalkboard. It totally went against everything they thought they believed. And then years later, they call back and they say, hey, wait a minute, you know, I've been doing some thinking and some researching and some studying. Meanwhile, your belief system has never changed because you've always been able to maintain that natural Natural health is the way to go. Mm-hmm. We just keep, I think, getting more things on our side that validates and solidifies the fact that our bodies are designed a certain way to receive a certain treatment through nutrition. And like Hippocrates said, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. That's like a foundational eternal truth that nobody can change no matter how many pharmaceuticals are on the face of the planet. Yeah, and I can attest to something because I started that blend fest back in June or July. So it's been, you know, a good six eight months and i noticed at that six eight month mark like a a difference a new a new uh, i'm lighter right um and and not just physically lighter but uh it's it's and i've heard this too before like if you ever take a really good supplement something like an ocean's alive phytoplankton that just takes months for your body to finally get balanced back in or mm-hmm. once you finally get your body balanced i guess it, because uh, I hear they want you to do Gerson for 18 months, right, when you right. got cancer to make sure you've really cleaned out your cells. So it takes you – you're not going to clean your cells out overnight is what I'm saying. Right. And it's been – after that eight-month mark or so, I, I can feel a difference now, Joni. Oh, my God. I feel like Superman. And even though I'm 45, I mean, I feel like a machine, like – well, Never before. I have noticed a difference in you since, I mean, we've just decided to stay in contact after Long Beach and I had you on the show several times and I'm telling you, I, I notice a difference in the, in your demeanor, the way you talk, the way, the way you walk even, right? Because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks to my friend Raul Rodriguez. He's yeah. rehabbing my hip for free for me. He does the Lakers and he did Mike Tyson. He got Mike Tyson to go from being like a crazy kind of guy to a vegan and chill. <laughs> for you, I, you just keep riding this wave of more intelligence and, and growing in every way. And I have to say that through this weight loss journey, the same thing, I've noticed a, a change in my demeanor, a change in my outlook in life, a change in my not only my body but just my desire and motivation to to be the best me that I can be not only for myself but for my children and actually giving myself permission because as a mom Ian and you'll figure this out when you find a woman and have kids m- women can tend to feel like they don't give themselves permission to uh, take care of themselves as much like you just get so caught up in being like wife and mom and everything for everybody and the demands are always high that you just kind of get lost in the process somehow. And I finally am like, I have to set a better example for my daughters in every way in my life in order for them to have a healthy understanding of like what being a woman and a mother should look like instead of mom run down and overweight and everything else. (laughs) And that's what I'm loving about my life is teaching by example. I have so many of my friends and thank you, Facebook friend that let me know again. Thank you for about that's very important, people, is to validate those that are helping you. Like, I try to do that as much as I can. Yeah. And to validate you, Ian, when you got on that juice fast was right when I needed to start making some other changes because my weight loss had plateaued. And even though these last, like, 20 pounds are hanging on for dear life and they don't want to go anywhere, <laughs> I know I have to change things up. But watching you lose that weight, that really helps, like, kick me into gear as in, like, taking it up a notch and going the rest of the way, or at least going to the next level, which allowed me to, to drop more weight now up to about the 80 pound mark. So I am thanking you for your motivation because it rubs off and we all, it all just kind of circulates and generates. Yes. That's kind of the point I was trying to make that. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks to everybody for validating me because a lot of people come to me and said, Hey, uh, thanks to you doing your little juice video. I've done it and I've lost 40 pounds myself or 20 pounds or this oh, or that. Wow. So it's, that's very gratifying too. So that's, and that's the best way to do it. Is uh, is it to do it for your own health and well-being? Trust me, you'll feel better when you're not as heavy, and then when you get rid of all those toxins and the things that are really dragging you down, you you'll literally become Superman or Superwoman. Trust me, if you stick to an all-organic, 
um, blend fast where you're basically drinking a big gold shake in the morning and a big shake at night and you can have a vegan meal in the middle if you want but I, ne- I didn't for about two months I just did the shake for two months to get to strip my insides of all the garbage basically and, and the fat fell off too which was nice so <laughs> I, I would recommend doing that and then I, I'm basically almost vegan these days I, I personally always am going to want to probably eat meat because that's what my body tells me to, but it's only once or twice a week now instead of three times a day. No, I'm the same way. I cut meat and dairy out of my diet because I I had to shed some of those just stacked up hormones from all of the meat and dairy I was consuming for several years. I felt like I I had to shed some of that. I I can't explain it. It was just kind of an energy energy thing, like um, the the, the energy in the food, the energetics, understanding macrobiotics. It just, I had to get, get rid of it. The one thing that I've added back into my diet for probiotics is like a grass-fed, whole-fat yogurt. And I eat that with like the homemade granola that I make and flaxseed oil, a ton of flaxseed oil. I love flaxseed oil. And Mm -hmm. that just sustains me. And I've also noticed an increase in my immune system health. So like I'm getting over anything that I might get, um, any illness-wise, I'm getting over it just so much more quickly than I was a year ago. You know, yeah. so yeah. I, I like just am going to eat according to how my body's telling me to. Right. Like, I don't know about you, but in my neck of the woods, L.A., right after the Christmas holidays, bam, everybody got knocked out with this wicked flu. And, and I was literally knocked out for maybe 24 hours, but most people were like three, four days or a week. And I can only assume it's because I'm, I'm fairly healthy with this blending. And, and I brought my pH too. For folks, I was freaking out, man. I thought I had prostate cancer. And I probably did because my pH was five for over six months. And I, if you, I kind of have to be a cancer coach these days sometimes, even though I'm just a filmmaker. And people come to me and they say, I got a pH of five. I'd say, well, you better change that because... If you don't have cancer now, you probably will in a few years, if not sooner, because and that's you're what acidic. You, right, and that's what you found in your research, like the same kind of story with the pH being at 5 yeah. over and over and over again. That's what you've heard, and that's how that's how you understand this. Yes, and now that's we're coming full circle and how I met Howard Hoffman and the whole pH strips. and uh, the Yeah, because, and it's funny, as I was, I, I'd like to bring this story up. When I forget if it was the light bulb or the radio or something, but a number of inventions that were invented, one spot in the world was also invented at at the exact same time in another spot in the world, and it's because we're all connected. We're we're one, and and our consciousness is one. We're just not that f- evolved yet, but we will be now that we're in the age of Aquarius. <laughs> but so, so we're all connected when when these inventions are being made. And that's why there's been discrepancies of who actually invented what. Well, when he came up with the pH strips, I had been dreaming about that myself because Dr. Bernardo, who's the star of iCureCancer.com, uh, was always saying he basically had this one shake that, that is also up on my – if you go to YouTube channel and, and Google or search uh, Ian Jacqueline Blend Fast, new, I think new is the best one, uh, it explains how to do the, the blending and all that. And it's got the actual recipe of this drink. And I had this dream that just basically uh, – take that drink and freeze dry it so if somebody was dying of cancer and didn't have the energy to actually juice the damage because juicing is is hard man it's a lot of work (laughs) if you're juicing all day long and you're sick it's really hard you know that's why they charge you 20 grand to go to gerson and they'll do it for you for like a month you know right but yeah, so basically, um, okay, so where was I in that? Uh, so the you pH? were, uh, the, the pH, like being on the same wavelength and in the same, right. yeah. So soon, yeah, as soon as he came to me with the P, the greens and the uh, the strips, I was like, <laughs> Dr. Bernardo would be so proud of you, man. Like, and may he rest in peace. Dr. Bernardo, the star of my film, I Cure Cancer, he cured more people than anybody I knew because he stuck by the Otto Warburg school of thought that cancer can't live in an alkaline diet, uh, uh, you know, body. state. Yeah, and right. so if you get your pH to 7.2, 7.4 from 5, and everybody I've ever known that had a pH of 5 that got it to 7.2, 7.4 cured themselves of cancer and lived, except for one, because unfortunately, and she's a good friend of mine, uh, may she rest in peace, she was actually the executive producer to IQ Cancer, um, Jessica 
Um, she, uh, one of her family members died and it threw her into a funk and she went off her diet and the, the program and she, her cancer came back and she is now gone. I am so Aww. sad to say Jessica sad Biscardi, too. whereas she was the poster child for the cancer world really. But it just goes to show you. And Dr. Bernardo, he told me this too, his words, I'll never forget. He said, you can't go off the diet. You can't go back to your old ways because the cancer will come back that's why you got it in the first place and unfortunately she didn't heed that advice and she's not here but anybody else and i've been telling everybody else if you follow the alkaline diet again otto warburg got a uh i almost said gold medal <laughs> he got, <laughs> yeah you got a gold medal in the 88 olympics with lennox lewis that's right <laughs> <laughs> no otto warburg who got the nobel prize nobel for Peace basically prize, yeah when bernardo figured that out and he also went via Brian Scott Peskin. I got to give props to Professor Brian Scott Peskin because he's got a book out there called The Cancer, The Hidden Story of Cancer. I think it's called. Really good book. Explains it all. So uh, the first thing I tell everybody to do is to get on an alkaline diet if they have cancer. And, and nowadays you got the cannabis hemp oil that's really good with the canna- cannabinoid system. Yes. Um, yes. And you, you were the one that brought that to me. And I'm like, mm. Yeah. I don't go there with illegal drugs. Sorry. You know, like I am a law abiding citizen. I don't you know, I don't want to even mess with that. But you just kept telling me and telling me wh- what the benefits were. And finally, I had to break and say, OK, what do you mean we have a cannabinoid system in our body? And so I started l- researching the endocannabinoid system and why our body responds to the cannabis oil or the, the raw juicing of cannabis plant. Now, there are 700 different varieties. Last I had studied and learned, there were 700 different varieties of the hemp plant. Some have the THC, which is a psychoactive ingredient. Others don't. So that would be called like the CBD oil, which would be the cannabidiol oil that you can find at hempmedspx.com. Bell30 is the discount code. I had Chris Boucher on the show to talk about the cannabinoid system. It was the holy anointing oil. Cannabis was part of the book of Exodus in the Old Testament when Moses was given the, the oil, the holy anointing oil. Cannabis was part of that, as was frankincense and myrrh. Cannabis oil has been subdued in our culture because of this thing called war on drugs. And thankfully, other places like Colorado uh, are legalizing it for both recreational and medicinal use. So, Ian, thank you for always just telling me the high praises of this cannabis oil and the Rick Simpson oil and how people are experiencing amazing healing results by using it. And it it's not a silver bullet. I mean, everybody has their own journey to walk through. But this thing is good for so many b- systems in your body. It's almost like you can't go wrong with it. Oh, yeah. It's it's the most amazing thing I've seen because I was helping people cure themselves of cancer basically the last 17 years. Since the moment Cynthia told me or I learned that Cynthia cured herself of cancer, from then on I was learning. So it didn't take too long for me to start explaining to other people what I was learning. Um, and we never had cannabis hemp oil. Right. All we had was the alkaline. She didn't even know it was called an alkaline diet back then. Right. Nobody did. She just was on it and also got on the right machine because she's a very spiritual woman and basically let God lead her. And she, the right people showed up at the right time and, and boom, she was cancer free in, in I think a year or eight yeah, months. Yeah, it was she, about a year. And, yeah. Eight months. Yeah, eight months. And she was only given that a, about a year or two to live. So, uh, that's what made me the believer and what made me make the film. Oh, and to get back to what I'll make in part two, I realized that, uh, the reason why I had to make I cure cancer part two is because I thought now that I know how to cure cancer that's cool but turns out if I have a kid that's under 18 they don't um, get the same benefit I do and and, and and able to say no they get actually forced chemotherapy and radiation and surgery if that's what the doctor orders it's called standard of care now thanks to doing my movie i know chemotherapy has a three percent success rate for tumor type cancers and even for leukemia it's uh, it's best at maybe a 40 percent success rate which is still horrible compared to what i could do on my own at home with my own child with my knowledge i have i have probably 85 maybe even 95 percent chance of of helping my child because i would never give them chemo radiation surgery in the first place so boom their chance of survival automatically just hits the fan you know boom it's going to be huge comparatively speaking 
And then when you incorporate the whole cannabis hemp oil to get the cannabinoid system, especially for leukemia, because that's it's really helping. That kills me. That they've got at least two or three people I'm following right now that are being cured of their leukemia from from the hemp oil, but they're still being forced ke- the chemo. Yes. Because they they happen to be in legal states and uh, they're able to get the, the cannabis hemp oil, but because they're a kid and under 18, they're forced standard of care and they're forced chemo. Even though the cancer's gone, they're still being bumped up full of these toxins. It's, I mean, I know. to our babies, to our children, they're so lucky it's not my kid. Oh, Ian, I know. You're just, uh, you know, your heart is just so in the right place when, when you care so much about other people people's children and that's how our world kind of collided and and we were able to start talking when we were in long beach we found out that you and i had been working on the same story the jay matthews story i had been reporting on that little did i know you before i knew you you were had stayed at their house and you had filmed their daughter and i mean it's just been heart-wrenching to Uh sit back and and jay was on the robert scott bell show last week talking about it and i've Uh been following him in his case with his daughter and we have you know cried and prayed on the phone together it, it's just been heart-wrenching to watch this family have their rights unconstitutionally stripped from them and to watch his daughter go through everything that she's been through you know as a result of somebody else's standard of care decisions it's not even humane and no child should ever have to go through that and so you have the footage on for your second film i've been interviewed for your second film and and you'll i know in april you're going to be doing some more interviews and i think we even have more updates and information to add to it so i'm excited for this other film to come out because i think it's it just n- puts the nail on the head for parental rights medical and health freedoms yeah because like i'm not allowed to to take the law into my own hands, because I would. I mean, um, when I was check it out, I'm sitting there, right? I'm hanging out with uh, with Jay and his and his wife and his three kids. It's Christmas. It's beautiful. The, the The church came over and sang to them, and you know, it's it's a somber mood because you never know what's going on. She's got cancer and she's being tortured in the morning. I thought there was a home invasion, and the 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 child was being sliced and diced and burnt with with hot irons or something i mean it turns out that's just what she goes through every morning when she gets her medicine one of her it's not even the chemo it's something else so i mean i'm i'm there for a few days and getting to know the family and she's just such a sweet little soul you know cute little thing and she's kind of close to me i just uh, i felt myself picking her up in my arms and walking out that front door getting into his car and driving to an airport and flying to mexico and not coming back for about six months and and bringing her back healthy and happy and ready to rock and roll but if god forbid we couldn't save her then i would never be able to come back and i'd be on the run for the law for the rest of my life but you know i felt in my heart we probably could have saved her you know because i've seen so many kids make it and and or adult, anybody anybody that isn't forced to chemo radiation surgery and is able to do what their body's supposed to do to heal i've just seen so many people you know what i mean so it's like there she is she's right in my arms i could take her and i knew what i'd be saving that one little soul from suffering i really believe in the long run my heart's belief my heart's desire is that she'll be able to survive and tell her own story right exactly from her let's, perspective let's the point is she had a good whatever. How old is she now? Is she, she I believe, is, yeah, she would be about 10. Yeah. like those It started are 10. when she was 8. Right, okay, so there's two years of pain, more pain than, you know, you put me and Mike Tyson through that kind of pain. I think we'd be crying like little babies. You know, I don't know how she pulled it off, but... Oh, I'm getting all. Now I'm getting all. I got to get a heavy bag in here. Whenever we talk about Jay Matthews and that situation, I want to start punching things. I know. You you looked at her from a humane, compassionate place where you were like, this little baby, if I can save her, I will. That is the right place to be in. That's the right mindset. And you also knew better, right, than to, to do something that would be illegal. So you have the, you know, all of your faculties are in play. Everything that's supposed to be there is there in order yes. for, for you to be operating. And you know you can do more good for humanity by doing things the right way and doing it the, oh. the, through the right channels. And it was, it's not easy when you when you know it you could but you know i also know like i'm starting to learn not to hate the oncologist so much and not to hate certain individuals 
because it's really nothing personal. They just don't know any better. They actually still believe that chemotherapy works, that right. they haven't, they're too busy paying for their child's, um, you know, school and all that stuff, I guess, to really do any extra studying. Paying realize, off their school and paying, yeah, pay, right. right, and their malpractice insurance because that goes up. And, I mean, they have their own battles that they have to fight on their fronts, but they are just coming from a different philosophical, like totally different foundational belief system because it's their training. Yeah, I know. I have no doubt. This is why so many doctors have crossed over. Because they right. continued their own education and they decided to pursue other realms of training that gave them a different way of to believe. Whereas if these other doctors don't do that and they stay stuck in the same training that they got in med school or, or they're only studying what certain science data says and not having a more objective look at science and data and uh, refusing to look at this other stuff, the refusal to accept any other thing, that's where I draw the line then and start to have to question their motives. Well, and it's just so silly when they say sugar doesn't affect cancer. Mm-hmm. I mean, they know themselves by they inject sugar Absolutely. into their dyes so they can see the cancer eating it. I mean, so come on. Right. It's just, it's and that's enough. They're doing, I think, I'll tell you, they, they, again, they just better hope and pray that these laws change before I have a child. <laughs> well, and maybe, and maybe quickly. you're, maybe you'll, you'll end up not having a child until, you know, this other work is done. Who knows? You don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope not that long. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I just think having a baby is a blessing. And I think that, you know, I really, I hope and pray and, and kind of, you know, in a sense, kind of want to, I don't know, bless that upon you in, in that way, because it is, it's so life changing and it brings so much joy. It really, yeah, which I'm, reminds me, I want to do a show with you. Um, for those that don't know, I got a show, a Zen live TV show uh, on Wednesday nights. Um, at 715 Pacific, and I want to have you on, Joni, so I can interview you on home birthing. Home oh, birthing. yeah, absolutely. You know, we have an open invitation to be on each other's shows whenever. <laughs> That's right. I've yeah. done a couple of, what, I think I've maybe done two or three now of Zen Live TV shows with you, and I'd be more than happy to be on the show to talk about one of my favorite topics in the whole wide world, is that, and that's home birth. Um, you also have a radio show, right, on uctv.com. UCY TV. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Sorry. UCY. <laughs> .tv and ZenLive.tv. Yeah, they're both okay. .tv. Okay, both .tvs. Okay, UCY.tv. And uh, you do that radio show with Jay Cynthia Brooks. Oh, yeah. Over we the knew, years. Like, when we first met that uh, we were kindred spirits. It's just, and, and she's the one that introduced me to Reverend Lynn, who introduced me to the Essene meditation. And I'm, uh, for those that don't know, I'm a very spiritual man, too. I've learned mind, body, and soul is what makes the man. And the, the spiritual side, I studied Essene meditation. Now, Jesus Christ was in Essene. And uh, probably the most famous, obviously. <laughs> uh, and I, so I studied that kind of meditation as well, which is what Cynthia used to ch- help cure her cancer. Because um, you basically, cancer is an energy. Everything's energy, right? And you got a disease. If you have, say, a breast cancer, that's in your fourth chakra, which is love. So you probably either have some issues accepting love or, or, or giving it. Who knows? I mean, those are things for you to figure out because it's up to you to, ch- to change the energy. Like, that's what's called spontaneous healing. Some people can heal themselves just by fixing their brains. Like, right, like the way they think or their mindset or forgiving or releasing something that has that has been plaguing them for a long time emotionally. Kind of with the healing of my body and in that I'm still in that journey. When I finally faced the emotional problems that I was having in my life and I faced the abuse, that empowered me to for my body to open up and start changing itself physically. Well, guess what? We're we're going to run out of time. <laughs> oh, wow. Right on. We got a, I didn't even know we were going a full hour. I wasn't sure if we were just going a few minutes. or. But, I oh, was, right you know, check out that stamina with all that weight loss. <laughs> yeah, weight that's loss. right. We're in shape now. We're, we, we're in shape. we were only going to go a half hour, and now we went an hour, Ian. That's so funny. <laughs> that's right. But it was it was flowing tonight. So whenever it flows, it's good. Well, it's good to keep it going, and that's what I love. So we can look forward to if those who want to see your movie, they can go to iCareCancer dot com now, and then you'll be on the lookout for iCareCancer dot com number two. 
Right, and now don't forget Hemp Boxer, which is going to be my third movie, and I brought this up last time I was on your show. It just came out of the blue then, and it's actually happening, and I've got producers. I've already sat down with producers and directors, and it looks awesome. like they want to make it. They want to make this film, so it's going to be basically uh, the, I come back out of my kickboxing retirement to fight in UFC Ultimate Fighting Style MMA, even though I don't know how to do the ground game, so that'll be part of the drama. And I do that to make money to pay for cancer treatments for my daughter who's got leukemia because she got leukemia because my wife died of cancer not too long ago. And that's a classic textbook case is that children will get a cancer because they're, they've lost a parent. You know, it's that emotional thing. Yeah. So basically people will end up going to see this film, watching a good old MMA martial arts style movie and walk away knowing how to cure cancer. Best way to teach them is to make them not even know they're being taught. Right. <laughs> These kids today, in their 20s, they come up, especially it's weird when the pretty girls come up to me and they say, oh my God, I used to watch you on TV with my dad. That was our thing. We'd watch karate movies together, you know? And right. Like, Whoa, now, I remember really? you from Days of Our Lives. No kidding. I do. Wow. Yeah. I, I, it wasn't until I saw some of your clips, I decided to start like researching you a little bit. So I watched Jackal. And right. then I decided to uh, look at some of the old movie clips on your YouTube channel. And the Days of Our Lives clips, that, that was like the, it was summer break, right? And I was home from school and my grandma would come up from Florida and she'd watch Days of Our Lives. So I'd sit and watch it with her. I totally remember the scene <laughs> that you did with Will. It's just it cracks me up that, that like here we are friends now. Yeah, right on. Right yeah. on. Oh, you know what? You know what I want to say, too, before I go? Yeah, I got about a minute you know, or so. Good. Because I, I got some new stuff for the cannabis um, information. Cannabis hemp oil is really well made. Okay. The Rick Simpson way of doing it is where you boil it with um, 99% ISO or Everclear are the mm -hmm. two good ones that I would recommend. Um, but if you want to, you can also just basically diff or diffuse it with coconut oil. Just pour in, a, like a, say, an ounce of weed and, and then fill it up with some coconut oil. Boil that for an hour. Some people do it three hours. Some people do it five. Definitely look on YouTube to figure out how to do it. But basically make your cannabis hemp oil with coconut oil and lecithin, granules. Lecithin, granules. Yeah, so, you can so get the non-GMO non soy lecithin. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, that's just your tip of the day. Word on the street for all you home medicine makers. That is supposedly one of the newer, better ways of getting the cannabinoids into your system is using the coconut oil and the lecithin. Between breast oh, milk yeah. and coconut oil, now we got cannabis. Wow, it's it's amazing what what you can heal with your body. And on that note. I will say that the show is for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose or treat any ailment or illness. It's been Homegrown Health on naturalnewsradio.com. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash homegrownhealth. Follow us on Twitter at HGH Radio or email homegrownhealthradio at gmail.com. Thanks, Ian Jacqueline of iCareCancer.com for being on the show today.